Welcome to another episode of our Data Cloud video series. My name is Aditya and I'm a developer advocate here at Salesforce. In this episode, we're going to talk about data actions. Data actions are nothing but events that are sent by Data Cloud to predefined targets whenever certain conditions are met. These targets can then use these events to trigger their own downstream business processes. When defining a data action, you need four things. First, a target which defines where the event has to be sent. There are currently three targets that we support, platform events, webhooks, and marketing cloud. You will have to set up these targets before creating the data action. Next, you need to define what is the object that triggers this action. It can either be a data model object or a calculated insights object. Next, you specify event rules that define when the action is fired, whether it is fired when a record is created, updated or deleted. And finally, you define what we call action rules, which are nothing but filter conditions that define which records trigger the action. Let's now look at a few examples. As with the other episodes in this series, we are working with Solar Circles, a fictitious company that sells solar panels. In the previous episode, we created a streaming insight that calculates the number of voltage drops a panel has in a 10 minute window. Now, I need to create a case whenever the number of voltage drops for a panel is more than three. To achieve this, I'll create a data action that fires a platform event whenever the count exceeds three, and then I'll subscribe to this platform event to create a case. As mentioned earlier, the first step in creating a data action is to actually create the target. From the data action targets tab, click new. Give the target a name and choose the target type. In this case, it's a Salesforce platform event. Next, Select the org to which this platform event has to be published to. You can select any org that you have already connected to Data Cloud from setup. Click save and you're done. As you know, there are different standard platform event objects that Salesforce publishes. A platform event target always publishes an event called data object data change event. Now that the target is created, let's create the action itself. From the data actions tab, click new and first select the target. Let's choose the one we just created. Next, choose the data space and the object type. You can either choose a data model object or a calculated insights object. Let's choose calculated insights and choose an insight that calculates the voltage drops. Next, choose when the event should be fired. I'll select record created and updated. In action rules, specify the filter criteria, which is going to be if the total drops is greater than three. Click next and give this action a name. And that's it. You've set up Data Cloud to fire a platform event whenever the number of voltage drops is greater than three. Now, what about the receiver of this platform event? In the target Salesforce org, we have to subscribe to the data object data change platform event. You can do this using a flow or Apex or any other technology like PubSub API, MuleSoft and so on. The data object data change event has many properties, out of which the below two are important. First is the action developer name, which contains the name of the data action that fired this platform event. Since different data actions created for different purposes fire the same type of platform event, this field helps you identify which data action fired the event so that you can branch your business logic accordingly. Second is the payload current value, which contains a JSON representation of the fields 
in the record that triggered the data action. In our example, it will look something like this, where all the fields in our calculated insight are present. If you subscribe to this platform event via Apex, you can filter the events based on the action developer name field and parse the payload JSON pretty easily using built-in Apex methods. Once you get the data you need, you can create a case or run your own business logic. On the other hand, if you subscribe to this platform event using a flow, you can easily add a decision element to filter out events, but to parse the JSON payload, you'll have to include an Apex action. This Apex action will be responsible to extract the values from the JSON and return them as output properties so that you can map them to your flow variables. You can either write your own invocable Apex action for this purpose, or you can use a pre-written one from websites like unofficial SF. But wait, Salesforce has recently launched the ability to create a data cloud triggered flow that does more or less what I've shown you till now. Going back to our example, where I need to create a case whenever the number of drops is greater than three, here is how I can do it with a data cloud triggered flow. In the new flow screen, select data cloud triggered flow. Choose the data cloud object that triggers this flow. In our case, it is the calculated insight. I'll then choose to fire this whenever a record is created and set the entry conditions to say total drops greater than three. I can then add a create records element to create a case. By directly mapping the fields from the calculated inside object without needing a custom invocable action at all. Now, how are these different? When should you choose what? It's actually pretty simple. If the flow must run in the same org where data cloud is provisioned, you can use data cloud triggered flow. If the flow must run in a different org, then you choose data actions. Moreover, data actions can be used for more than just flows. When the data action fires a platform event, you can subscribe to it from anywhere, not just within flows. And remember, along with firing platform events, data actions can also send events to webhooks and marketing cloud as well, the other two targets. That brings us to the next segment of this video, where we'll create a data action that sends events to a webhook. A webhook is nothing but an API endpoint, which when invoked runs its own business logic. Here, I've set up a simple API endpoint using Node.js that just logs whatever data and headers it receives. Let's try invoking this from Postman. Here, I'm sending a post request with a simple JSON in the body. Once sent, notice that the webhook logs the JSON that I sent along with the headers. Now, I want Data Cloud to send events to this webhook, for which I'll have to first set up the action target. From the data action targets tab again, I click new, give it a name, and this time I select webhook and enter the webhook URL. Once you click on save, in the detail page, notice it shows a section called secret keys. You can click the generate button to generate a key and click on copy. The copied secret key, in fact, consists of a signing key and a signing algorithm as shown on screen. Data Cloud uses this key to sign the requests it sends to the webhook. The webhook then needs to validate this request signature to verify if the request has indeed come from Salesforce and to make sure no one has tampered with it. Remember, if you do not generate the secret key, 
data cloud will not be sending events to the webhook. When the event is sent from data cloud, the signature of the request is present in the header with the name x hyphen signature. And the actual event data is sent in the body of the request. The event data is in the format of the data object data change event. I have now updated my webhook code to check for the request signature. Notice that the code uses the signing key that I copied from data cloud to validate the signature. Now from Postman, if I send the same request, it fails as there is no signature present in the header. And when I try to add a random signature, it still fails because the request isn't signed with the data cloud signing key. Now that our webhook is secure, let's create a data action that sends events to this webhook. From the data actions tab, click new and select the webhook target we just created and click next. Let's choose a DMO this time and select the object that contains the data for a panel's power consumption. Select the event rules and add a filter. Give the action a name and click save. Let's now insert data into this DMO using the ingestion API. And in a couple of minutes, you should see the data action being triggered and the event being received at the webhook. Notice it contains the X signature header and in the body you can see the event detail in the format of the data object data change event with the action developer name and payload current value fields. Finally, let's talk a little bit about the marketing cloud target. This requires a little more setup than the other targets because actions sent to marketing cloud can trigger emails and journeys. So before setting up the target here in data cloud, you'll have to ensure you've connected your marketing cloud instance to data cloud, set up your business units, created email templates and subscriber lists. If you want to trigger a journey, then your journey's entry source must be an API event. We'll dive more into this in a different video. But once your setup in Marketing Cloud is complete, you can then choose the business unit. And as a destination, you can select either an email, in which case you'll have to choose an email template, or you can choose a journey builder to trigger a journey. And that's how you create and use data actions. If you found this video helpful, give it a like. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button to get notified whenever we publish new videos.